Hello everyone, welcome to this video where I will be showing you how to use python.env, a Python package for loading operating system environments to your application from a secrets file. The reason why you would want to do this is because you never want to commit sensitive information and credentials to your code base and your Git history. So having variables within an environment variable file makes it easier to update them as you don't need to update your whole code base to do so. So without any further ado, let's install python.env as well as some other packages and I'll show you exactly how it works. So I'm, I'm within my IDE, so I'm gonna to go to my terminal and I'm gonna run poetry in it because this is my um, go-to Python package manager. So I am going to add my dependencies here. And the first dependency we need is python.env. So it's the first one, any version would do. And I'm going to add Flask just to make this example more practical and to help you understand why we want to use this. So the first one, no, we do not need any development dependencies and yeah, we're going to generate our file. So here I'm going to activate my environment and I'm going to install my dependencies. Okay, so we're ready to start. So I'm going to navigate here and create a file called app.py. So within this file, we can start loading our .env, okay? So there's a function called load underscore .env. Okay, so from .env import load .env. And this is all we need to do because this function, it takes a couple of arguments. The first one would be the path to the .env. So we could say something like uh, some path, and then we could say um, dot um, test env. So you can actually change the name of the dot env, but if you don't pass anything to this function, by default, it will look for a file that looks like this, dot env. So um, to begin with, let's just go here and create a file called .env. And this is where all our environment variables will live. Before we add any of the environment variables, let's just try something. We wanna print, we're gonna go os.environ. So we're gonna import os, and then we're gonna try and get a specific variable. So I'm gonna say flask debug, okay? So we have not specified this environment variable, so it should be none. So I'm gonna say python3 app.py, and here we go, it's none. However, if we add this environment variable within our file, and we set this to true, here we see it's true. So let's just uh, try a few more things. So for now, I'm just gonna not in here. So we need to close this terminal and go to our application. So I'm going to go here and instantiate my Flask application. So let's import Flask. And here I'm just gonna pass name. Okay, and this is all we need to do. So within Flask, we have a development server. So I'm gonna run that server. So I'm gonna say if the name is equal to main. This is what I always like to do so we don't run this file from uh, another file if we have imported. I'm gonna say app.run and here is where the practicality of environment variables comes in this specific example. So I'm gonna say host is equal to host. We don't have this variable set yet but I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm trying to do here. Port and also debug is equal to debug. Okay, so here I'm gonna create this 
um, variables. So I'm going to say host is equal to os.environ.get and here we want to get the host. So I'm going to say app host. And then as a second argument is the default value. So I'm going to set this to 0 .0 0 0.0.0.0. And this is if I don't, if, if this variable, this environment variable cannot be found. So I'm going to duplicate this a couple of times. And here I'm going to say port. Okay. And here we're going to say flask development port. And I'm going to default this to 8,000, just for this example. And uh, here we're going to say debug, OK? And here we're going to say flask debug, OK? We're going to default this to false. But if this variable exists, it will set it to that variable. At the moment, we've got it set to true from here. So let's go to our terminal and run this file again. Okay, so here we can see it's running on port 8000 and that's localhost. And we can see here debug mode is on. And, and here we've said flask debug or false. So if I was to remove this variable or comment it out and kill this application and run it again, here we have debug mode off. Okay, we can also change this and we can say flask development port, I might want to override this. So I'm going to say 9000. And this is what I was saying previously at the beginning of the video, you might want to change a few things quickly. Uh, and uh, rather than changing your code base, you might want to change your env file. So I'm going to kill this and I'm going to restart it. And here we go. That's simple. Now our application is running at port 9000. And that's the power of environment variables. But it gets even better. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to specify a couple of other variables. So I'm going to say Postgres host. Okay, this is if you're using a Postgres database. Okay, I'm going to duplicate this a couple of times. So here I'm going to say user. Here I'm going to say password. And here I'm going to say DB. All right, and just to keep this simple, I'm going to name this some host just for clarity, because um, this will uh, make more sense in the example I'm trying to do here. So here I'm going to say some user, some password, of course, don't use passwords and users with like the ones I'm doing here. This is just for the example. And here I'm going to say some database. And what I'm trying to do here is for example, with Postgres, you have a database URI, and that is essentially a, a URL-like uh, link that includes the username, the password, the host, and the database within a single line. So we're going to achieve this uh, here. So we're going to say database underscore URI is equal to PostgreSQL colon forward slash. And here we need to add the username. So our username is some user. So we could paste that here. But that essentially creates duplication. So what if this user was to change, we'd have to change it here as well as here two places, we don't want to do that we want this to be a bit more dynamic. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use dollar sign. And then I'm going to open and close the braces. And then within the braces, we're going to say Postgres user, which is essentially uh, the user we have here, the variable. And then uh, we need to add a colon to this uh, line. And then we're going to add our next variable, which is the password. So I'm going to paste that there. 
And then we need to say at, that's the syntax for this um, uh, URI. And then we're gonna add our next variable, which is our host. And then our host is this one here. And then finally, we're gonna add the database name. So this one here, and that is it. So essentially what this does is it expands these variables and it will essentially create a single variable within um, our ENV when it loads the ENV to our application. So if we go back to the application and we try and print that, so I'm gonna say print os.environ.get, and what did we name this? Database URI, okay. So if we go here, we kill this. So here we go, PostgreSQL colon, some user colon, some password at some host forward slash some database. So this got expanded and this makes our life very easy when you wanna work with environment variables. So um, yeah, I hope this video was helpful. Um, Oh, and also one more thing that I forgot to say, uh, within your gitignore file, you always want to say .env. So that means ignore the .env and don't commit it to uh, your source code. Um, and you might be asking, how would you know what environment variables you would need to add? So um, as an example, let's go to the terminal. And then I'm going to go here and I'm going to copy .env and I'm going to copy it to .env.example. Okay, and this is some good practice that you're doing. So if we go to .env, of course you'd remove these credentials here. Okay, I'm going to uncomment that. So this is what you tend to do, you tend to create another file called .env.example, which is not ignored from your um, Git history. You do not include sensitive information in here, just a template of what needs to be completed. So your coworkers, if you're working on a project, will know exactly what they need to add when they're working with this application. And try and always use environment variables when it comes to sensitive information. Um, and yeah, um, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please like, comment, and share the video as this helps the channel grow so I can keep making these videos. I upload new videos every week about Python and Flask. So if you wanna get notified when I do, please subscribe as well as click the notification bell so you can get notified whenever I upload a new video. Thank you. See you in the next one.